here connected um, then I will I will officially start the meeting. So please bear with us. It's uh, one of those things, even at County Hall, uh, which, which is where I am, uh, we do sometimes get hit by gremlins. Right, so. You can start the board. Someone, is right. the, someone is sharing the screen on, on the main main screen. Right. OK, everybody, I'm going to start the very interesting meeting, the meeting <laughs> in one minute's time. Just so that everybody can get their uh, cameras on or off if they wish and their speakers um, off at this point. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure someone who's trying to take the screen we, we, is how to do it. We've still got the screen, screen share on. Uh, Fiona, uh, uh, I think it's you. It's the one with the X. To your right. To your right. To your right. That's the one. Click that. Uh, there you go. Thank you. The normal service has been resumed. Slightly delayed by about four minutes and uh, my apologies for that. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you to this extraordinary gen uh, meeting of um, Hertfordshire County Council. Uh, prior to this meeting, I'll read out the, there will be no prayers. Um, I'll make the, the usual announcement that we now make at the beginning of this meeting. Uh, you will see that there are some changes to how we do things. And what I would say is that be prepared for adjustments to continue to be made to how we electronically uh, deliver this meeting as we take advantage of improvements uh, to the system. So for the, under the auspices of COVID-19, the, the attendance is, at this meeting will be held in this way. So due to the coronavirus pandemic, the council will be holding this meeting electronically in accordance with the relevant regulations. Members of the public may also attend this meeting in an electronic capacity, and there is a link on the Council's website for them to do so. Members of the Council are asked to keep their microphones switched off until called to speak, and to switch their microphones off once they have finished speaking. Cameras may be left on throughout the meeting if members wish. If you experience connection or other technical issues, it may help to switch your cameras off. The camera should be switched on if and when speaking at the meeting. However, um, if there is technical disruption due to broadband issues, whatever, then I may ask you all to turn your uh, to turn your cameras off. I don't want to do that, but I know that in the last meeting there were issues which were caused by, by heavy usage, not just of the camera function, but the fact that so many members are working uh, using their own broadband and some broadband widths um, uh, apparently are better than others. This is what I'm advised anyway. So to indicate a wish, the speaker should use the raised hand function. Now this is completely different to what we were doing last, last meeting and this is one of the changes that we've brought in to try and facilitate uh, the functioning of the meeting. So if you wish to speak, use the raise hand function. And use of the meeting chat function is exclusively for voting. And I must emphasize that. Um, if any members have technical issues, then you've all got numbers where you can phone, uh, get in contact with members of our technical team who are here um, uh, throughout the meeting to assist members. There should be no need to, uh, uh, to resort to chat. Always, always put your hand up. And the members of the Democratic Services uh, team who are here with me at County Hall will be helping uh, me to keep track of all of those hands up requests uh, and so on. Um, but this meeting we're going to start um, perhaps including a few more breaks because of the of the strain that actually staring at a screen uh, it places on people you cannot walk around and so on. Um, so breaks of four, five minutes will be held every hour and will be taken after a speaker in the debate has finished speaking. So if, if it occurs while somebody's taking part in the debate and they're making a speech, they can continue, but then we will have the break. If we are voting, the vote will be concluded before the break is taken. And, and so that's how um, I would wish this proceed. 
this meeting to proceed. Other breaks will be incorporated um, as appropriate. Can I just make a couple of comments about, again, the conduct of the last meeting? We had two or three issues where votes came through as other. And this was because people had just pressed the submit bar without uh, putting any choice of, yet, of uh, for, against or abstain in the, in the voting buttons, which will be on the bottom uh, right hand of your screen at the bottom of the chat function. So we, you, you, we would ask you perhaps to re-enter your vote. We would be doing our very best to make that everyone who is who is in on this uh, uh, this meeting is able to to cast their vote, whatever. We do have a problem with members who come as get in as guest because while they are able to uh, be part of the meeting, as it were, their vote cannot be captured through the through the, the the team's mechanism because they're not part of the H in, not in the HCC link as it were and we will endeavour to pick them up and give them an opportunity vote um, if we are aware of them but the final point about housekeeping if you like is don't forget to press the submit button once you have um, uh, have put your your vote in so. You can press it and it should flicker at you and let you know you voted. In fact, you can keep pressing, entering your vote and pressing that submit button uh, for as long as you like. It will not register on your screen, your own screen. It won't scroll up or down and show you that you voted, but it will register your vote. But it will only register your vote once. So if you vote incorrectly, um, you can then go back and resubmit your vote and press submit. If you want to abstain, you can do it again and press submit. If you want to just play games while you're waiting for everybody else to submit their votes, then you can play with that function. But just you press it for submit. Once we have reached where I close the vote, that's when it gets really serious. And it then, if there are one or two um, uh, issues about uh, whether you voted or not, then they could then they can be raised through putting your hand up to chat and making us aware of it. We can check who's voted, and if you clearly haven't registered to vote, then I'm quite prepared to register a vote um, after um, uh, that the vote has 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 closed in that sense. So just to make sure, I just want to make sure that everybody does have the opportunity to um, uh, to to take part in the voting. Fiona, your You've got a screen come up in the middle. Can you do something to clear it, please? Fiona Guest. Right. Okay. Derek Ashley. Uh, Chairman, is that cleared now? No, it's not. Right. Not on my screen. Control shift yeah. E. It's clear on on most screens. Well, it's not it's not clear on my screen. Hang on. Nope. Right. No. I... No, that's the new look. That's that's okay. That's fine, is it? Yeah. Right. So I just press OK. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Fine. Fine. Fine, fine Fiona. Thank you. Right now, I have a hands up from Derek. Yes. Francis, Derek. Just to confirm, I have no chat function at the moment. Now, it's no doubt Francis is probably going to say the same thing. I don't know if it's worthwhile checking with all the other members that have all got the chat function, or it's just um, just myself and Francis. It's on a it's on a um, HEC uh, system. We're not not trying to do anything peculiar. But I just thought I'd report that, and uh, it's been reported into the support as well. But if it doesn't clear, there's going to have to some other arrangement for voting. That's all. Right. Could I just ask? Anybody else who hasn't got chat function, can you raise your hand now so that we are aware of the scale of the problem? Colette, I confirm that's why I wanted to speak. I've used chat so many times in the past. It's obviously a blip today. Thank you, Francis. Have we had any other indications? No, it's just Derek, Ashley and Francis Button. Don't worry, both of you. Um, when we come to the voting, then we will we will um, make arrangements for you to be able to vote. Don't worry. Right. Um, okay. Then, so I now move on to 
um, item one, which is the minutes. Um, can I advise council that the consideration of the minutes of the county council meeting held at 10 a.m. on the 20th of October 2020 is deferred to the next meeting of the county council on 15th of December 2020. Item two, public questions, there are none. Item three, public petitions, there are none. Item four, which is to consider a motion from the Liberal Democrat group, provision of support to children eligible for free school meals during the school holiday periods at item 4.1 on the agenda. Can I invite Stephen Giles Medhurst to move the altered Liberal Democrat motion? And Stephen, you have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, thank you for that explanation. Uh, firstly, my group asks that all the votes are recorded by name in the minutes of this meeting as per the procedure laid out by yourself and agree with the Chief Legal Officer. Um, that should negate the need for a formal recorded vote. Uh, back in October, this council and the government had a chance to back Marcus Rushford's campaign to provide essential support to 1.3 million children in England in receipt of free school meals during the school holiday periods. They refused. Obviously, we are pleased the U-term that has come about, although it did come after waiting three weeks on a Sunday morning. Those three weeks could have been better spent preparing local councils to ensure every vulnerable family and child had that support. Mind you, this issue should have been foreseen months before, as indeed devolved governments had. Yes, it is welcome, but it's disappointing that England had to be dragged into this by Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland taking the lead. And I want at this stage to pay tribute to the hundreds, if not thousands of small businesses, many of them on the brink, charities, restaurants and cafes similarly in difficulties, who stepped in over the October half term to help out when the government had declined to do so. Yes, the recently announced 170 million to be used up to next April is welcomed, as is the 220 million for the rest of the year. But it's still less than the 522 million pounds spent on Eat Out to Help Out, which, as we now know, actually boosted the notorious R rate. Whilst the money the government has now announced is good news, it's far from clear that it will be sufficient to cover not only free school meals, but support vulnerable children and families locally, particularly the 220 million. This motion, which I hope we will pass, will give an assurance to all Chahart's children and vulnerable families that they will get the support they need. As the scheme must be in place well before our next council meeting on December the 15th, this is the only real opportunity that we have been given as opposition members to discuss this matter. The press release issued by the administration on November the 11th did not give the assurances that families and children in need would get that support that this motion now gives. Most importantly, it gives a forward commitment to that support that no child in vulnerable family shall go hungry or without essential items during the course of next year in terms of Easter and summer and the half terms. Let us not forget we have 22,200 children in need in Hertfordshire. They need our support and help. The downside of COVID is that there has been a massive rise in food banks and food poverty. The Trestle Trust predicts at least 670,000 extra people will become destitute in the last three months of this year, many of them with children. In the period April to June, 100,000 people, or more people, used food banks for the first time. That's a year-on-year -year increase of 61%. And statistics show there's been a 36% increase in children in food poverty. Forlorn and redundancies have forced low-income families to the brink. Yes, the extra money to the council will help, although I have to say I fear the 220 million from April onwards will not be nearly enough. It certainly does not meet the government's food czar announcements. So I hope the chart from the government will announce further long term support for the future. One thing COVID has been is an eye opener in that support for children of the school term is OK, but let's ignore them when they're on holidays. Well, that same family, whether it be a single parent or a family, are always in desperate need, whether it be in school time or in holidays. And I think now we all understand that. <clears throat> no civilised society should accept there is a child poverty. Recent successive governments have rightly worked hard to tackle pensioner poverty, and now we must address children poverty. 
as Henry Dimbledy, the government's food czar, has laid out most recently, and indeed was featured on the front page of the Times. I make no apologies for changing this motion to reflect what the government has agreed to do, as per the second motion on the agenda. And it uses virtually every word for that, plus adding our thanks to Marcus and clarification for the holidays. So I hope the council can unanimously agree this and that we can move forward together and support those vulnerable families and those children in Hertfordshire that need our support. Thank you, Chair. She's frozen. Chairman's frozen, so to speak. <laughs> it is quite cold, Stephen. I believe we now ask Mark Watkin to second. Um, I will second. I reserve my right to speak. Thank you, Susie. I now invite David Williams, the lead speaker for the Conservative group, to speak, and you have five minutes. Vice Chairman, thank you for that uh, introduction. Uh, Vice Chairman, I speak to oppose the altered motion at 4.1 on the order paper. Firstly, and for the benefit of members of the Council, residents watching this webcast and HCC officers, you all deserve an explanation as to why we're here this morning considering motions and amendments rather than focusing on specific proposals to support children, families and the most vulnerable this winter. This extraordinary meeting was called by members of the Liberal Democrat group to discuss the original motion at paragraph four on your order papers. On Sunday the 8th of November, the government announced two very welcome initiatives. Firstly, the £170 million winter grant scheme to ensure vulnerable households do not go hungry or be without essential items this winter. And secondly, 220 million pounds to expand the holiday activities and food programme for the Easter, summer and Christmas holidays next year. Hertfordshire's share of the former is nearly 2.49 million pounds. Details of the latter scheme have not yet been published. So with the original Lib Dem motion redundant, I wrote to Stephen Giles Medhurst at 9.59 that same day to share the government's press release and suggest that the rationale for the extraordinary meeting of council had passed, that we should focus on developing our plans to provide food for children who need it over the holidays, leading to consideration of a proposed approach at cabinet, panel and the agreement for, of recommendations for cabinet. When after a couple of further exchanges, it was evident that the Lib Dem group wanted the extraordinary meeting to proceed, the Conservative group submitted the motion at 4.2 on your order papers. I recount this chronology because we're being asked to agree a new motion and a series of amendments, including a request for an urgent meeting of the Children, Young People and Families panel, when this was exactly what was offered on the 8th of November. No, it's not. We do not require a meeting of council to arrange a cabinet panel meeting. I've asked officers to arrange a meeting of the children, young people and families cabinet panel on the morning of Thursday, the 26th of November, and that that should be followed by a meeting of cabinet at 2 p.m. In considering this way forward, the Lib Dem group have had an officer briefing on the administration's proposals to, to provide free school meal winter support vouchers. Turning to the substance, I'm very proud of the steps taken since March by the government, this authority, Hertfordshire schools, catering suppliers, and particularly our trading company, Hearts Catering Limited, and the district and borough councils since the onset of the pandemic. They have ensured that vulnerable children did not need to go hun hungry when away from their school settings, including periods when schools were not open for all students or when there's been a need for pupils to self-isolate. I'm also very proud of the wider support provided by the council and its partners to families and individuals, as well as to local food banks. 
The winter grant funding has been provided to 31st of March, the end of the financial year, which overlaps with the start of the Easter holidays. This administration is therefore pledging to extend a commitment to provide free school meal winter support vouchers for the Easter and the summer half term holidays in 2021. Looking forward, the government's commitment to support holiday activities over the Easter, summer and Christmas school holidays next year should provide a platform to extend Hertfordshire's very own and highly regarded holiday activity initiative, Fit, Fed and Red. Whilst recognising the steps taken on the ground in Hertfordshire, we must acknowledge the concerns of many of our residents about this important issue. The interventions proposed in Henry Dimbleby's national food strategy, namely an expansion of free school meals, holiday hunger schemes and a boost for fresh food. One vouchers. minute, David. Thank you. The boost for fresh food vouchers for pregnant mothers, as well, of course, as the work of Mark Market Rashford's outstanding food poverty advocacy. Chair, for the reasons outlined, I urge Council to defeat this superf superfluous and quite unnecessary altered motion. Thank you. Right. Thank you, David. I'm sure most of you wouldn't notice, but I, even my machine packed up for a few moments there. So thank you for Susie for being there ready to uh, to take over if necessary. Um, could I call Nigel Bell to speak as lead speaker for the Labour Group? Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me OK? I can hear you. Thank you, Chair. I speak to offer the Labour Group's full backing for the Liberal Democrats' amended motion and their amendment to the Conservative motion. I know that's later, but we also would add on a process point that we think there should be a joint meeting of the Children, Young People, Peoples and Families panel with the Education panel, because clearly it cuts across both, to approve the final implementation of the COVID winter grant scheme to ensure that vulnerable families and the 22,200 children in hearts who are in receipt of free school meals fully receive the support they need, and I hope that can be agreed. You would expect us as a Labour group to naturally welcome yet another U-turn by the government after the, the motion that was put down in Parliament by the Labour Party after such a principled and selfless campaign by the England footballer Marcus Rashford, who has shown what public service is all about. But why did this Conservative Council not follow the lead of so many Labour councils and, to be fair, some Conservative counties and even London boroughs like Kensington and Chelsea and even Hillingdon? who recognised their statutory education and welfare responsibilities and decided to do the right thing and took it upon themselves to prioritise their finances in such an unprecedented pandemic and still guarantee all those children and families would still get their full entitlement despite the government. But we have to pay tribute as well, obviously, in our own county to Stevenage Council here, who stepped up as a district and went above their statutory responsibility and pulled all the stops out to act at short notice in the recent half term week. And again, to be fair, a district council like Hartsmere, Conservative controlled, who stepped up and acted above and beyond their responsibility. Now, I can't confirm the details of what all the other districts did in half term. Uh, I mean, it was slightly disappointing that Watford Liberal Democrat controlled council. Um, uh, didn't fully step up to the plate. I know they did encourage people to um, go to uh, voluntary organisations, but they didn't ensure as much as they could, I don't think, in that week. I know it was very short notice on free schools meal, meals in the town. Uh, one has to remember the 45,000 that was saved because the traditional bonfire night, for example, in Watford was cancelled. So they did have some notice there. But now, of course, we've thankfully moved on and there is no reason why all of us across this council cannot cooperate across our county to build on the various schemes like the Fit, Fed and Red programme. And note, for example, a district like North Hearts, who I know last October had the foresight pre-COVID to put together a poverty distribution network so that all agencies could be able to help link voluntary and charity organisations to make sure our vulnerable are properly protected. There should be no excuse in, a, in our county with the funding locally, as well as now nationally, for not only our 22,000 free school meal children to be properly fed, but there should be a united effort to learn from this action and to use public and private means to ensure as far as possible other vulnerable families and communities are protected. And many of our residents, I'm sure, whatever their views, are going to be looking today and seeing the process, seeing this council meeting, seeing the motions and then counter motions and amendments and the, and the time taken up with this. And they're going to think, what on earth's going on? Why don't they just get on? 
use that extra money that's been a U-turn, get on and do it. Chair, I support this motion and the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, I've had uh, Sandy Walkington, uh, you've indicated you wish to speak. Um, thank you very much, um, Madam Chairman. Um, just to begin, I mean, I was just really depressed by David's speech because I thought that this was a way that we could just all come together. And yes, there is an extraordinary general meeting um, because these are extraordinary times. And I have to say that the wave of anger initially at the government's initial foot dragging and reluctance to address this issue, I have very rarely in all my nearly 50 years of active politics seen anything like it in this country. Now, I have the great privilege of representing the Sopwell Ward in St Albans. It's one half of my division. People always think of St Albans as a prosperous place, and largely it is. But I can tell you in Sopwell Ward, mm -hmm. there are 2,219 pupils at schools within the ward, and 309 of them, 14%, are on free school meals. I mean, this is very, very close to home. And I was just so proud of the local people, local residents, not often very wealthy themselves, the wonderful Sopel Community Trust, which is the local Muslim community, but addressing poverty and people across the entire community and how they stepped up to the plate. And I'm glad that the government in the end actually did recognise that there was a real issue here. Most of us, I think, probably benefited from the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. You know, it was aimed at middle class people like ourselves. And yes, it was important in order to make sure that restaurants and were able to survive. But that was a bung to the middle classes. It was a bung to people sitting in this meeting. And the people that we're talking about here, whose families depend on free school meals, they don't have the spare cash to actually be able to participate. And it is quite extraordinary that a government that was so ready to do that was relatively reluctant to do the second thing. And I just wish that we were all violently agreeing this morning rather than playing games round amendments and counter amendments. Thank you. Stephen, you wish you indicated you wish to raise a point of order. I, I do, Madam Chairman, understanding Order 117B, by way of a personal explanation confined to a part of an earlier speech made by Council, i.e. Councillor David Williams, who mentioned me by name and specifically said he'd offered a special meeting. I'm afraid that is a total lie. I emailed David Williams at 12.03 on the 11th of November, asking when a special meeting would be called. I sent a further email at 17.36 on the 11th of November, which reads as follows. Further to my earlier meeting, can you confirm if or not a special children's panel will be called and when it will be for to discuss this? I have yet to have an explanation or an answer to that email. It is totally disingenuous the leader of the council to say he has offered such a special meeting when the first we know about it is the announcement five minutes ago. Right. right. Thank you, Stephen. Your comments have been noted. Judy, I notice your hand is up. Um, is this in relation to uh, a, a, a set, the same point of order or something else? Absolutely not. I'm just joining the queue to speak on this motion. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Right. Um, right. I now have Richard Roberts listed to speak on the motion. Thank you, Chairman. I thought carefully about my response and I shall be brief. What a vainglorious and conceited, extraordinary meeting this is. The Liberal Democrats bring democracy low in Hertfordshire today. Resources, time and energy wasted on the whim of the opposition leader politically posturing during these worst of times. 
Today's utter waste of time, completely unnecessary, comes in the middle of the worst pandemic for a hundred years. Many on the front line have not seen a break from COVID for nine months now. How dare you distract this administration, this organisation, from its task in hand, which is keeping as many people as safe as possible and services running. You waste valuable taxpayers' money to achieve little that hasn't already been acted upon. You waste and disrupt members' and officers' time, interrupt planned business and distract for what? To dance on the head of a political pin for entire self-indulgence. Shame on you, Stephen. Shame on your charade. The agreed amended motion from the 20th of October, an additional councillor last year, full council stated, in light of the Welsh Government's decision and the call in by Marcus Rashford for free school meals to be made available in all school holidays until next Easter. This council expects the UK government to judge the role of social security payments, including universal credit, or an extension of free school meals to ensure that families struggling to feed children at school holidays are supported effectively. And they will be, and they are. And we thank government for its continued support, which has been in the public domain now for some considerable time. I will speak of our role in supporting families, agencies during the second debate, our motion. I'm done on this one. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Richard. Ron Tindall. Thank, thank you, Chair. I, I am disappointed in taking exception to the attempts to turn this, the, this debate into a political football and to shoot the messenger instead of recognising the government's inability to take decisions in good time and leave local authorities trying to implement public announcements without detail or guidance, something we have sadly become used to, and Richard Roberts should actually be used to this himself, particularly in adult care. And indeed, if you look through the agenda item, there are a number of lines there we're saying the detail isn't available and we await further guidance. So in supporting this motion, I should also point out that COVID-19 has actually exposed the underlying poverty that exists even in a wealthy county like Hertfordshire. And I hope that this government that we have, albeit rather lax and disorganised, will finally take note of the concerns raised on this issue and take steps to resolve the problem of hungry children at holiday time. All children should be cherished, particularly as the future of this country will depend on them. They are suffering enough, it is. And the last thing we want is for a, a considerable proportion to go hungry while they're trying to learn. I think it's disgraceful and I believe that it's also disgraceful for any Conservative attempts to turn this into a political football instead of, as my colleague Sandy Walkington said, agreeing with us and moving on. Thank you, Chair. Right. Thank you, Ron. Um, could I call Anthony Rowlands, please? Um, thank you, um, Madam Chairman. Um, I want to stick to the substance of the debate. Um, the motion highlights the, the desperate impact of COVID on the lives of our children and young people. For living, as Andrea said, in our midst, and a dire situation has been made worse. It's well documented that deep damage is done by interrupted education, and that has been compounded and has been shown by, again, from research that there's a proven link between poverty, including poor nutrition, and educational low attainment. Um, research has, has shown that disadvantaged pupils, on average, are 18 months behind the rest of their class. Um, their lives can and are blighted, can be and are blighted. Um, anyone who's taught, and I did so for 20 years, will know that hungry children do not learn effectively. And it's not for nothing that you have the break time stampede to the tuck shop. That's for those who have money to spend. Many don't. And that explains why schools, so many schools have established, for example, breakfast facilities, and why during the coalition years, um, the, the government led relentlessly by with Liberal Democrat support, uh, sought to widen provision of free school meals. That was why the campaign in the 
some of the holiday provision was so important. That was why we hoped the government would listen and plan ahead and why the recent again belated announcement um, is a potential step forward. But we've seen uh, that there is an alarming and continuing expansion in, in demand for food banks. The Trussell Trust have done wonderful work, have emphasised that many who use their services have, to use their phrase, suffered an unexpected hit. Those are families in need, children in need, where local knowledge is vital. And the Trust in their most recent report also point out that local welfare schemes run by local authorities have made a huge difference. Child Poverty Action Group as recently as last month have, have produced a report showing sharp rises in child poverty. That is why this issue is so important. We need details of provision and how this money will be used and how it will be integrated in the existing provision. I sit on the Child and Young People's um, panel. It's the first I've heard of it that there is a, a, a meeting on the 26th. I welcome that. I'm like a member. I'm told that panel has received some excellent reports about the work done by the authority, but it's absolutely vital that we keep a very close eye on how this um, money will be used and what provision will be established going forward. We need to keep this issue in the spotlight, and that is why we have called for this meeting and that is entirely justified. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Anthony. Judy Billing. Thank you, Anthony. Judy Billing. Thank you, Chair. I will be supporting this motion because I agree with everything therein. Uh, but personally, um, I didn't need a county council meeting this morning. I certainly didn't need a techy county council meeting this morning to establish the lamentable facts that A, the government response was dithering and pathetic once again, uh, leading up to half term, and that the county council didn't step up to the plate either, as some other um, conservative shire counties did. I remember particularly hearing um, Izzy Seacombe from Warwickshire on the radio talking about what they were going to do. I wrote to Terry Duris uh, well before um, half term to ask whether the county council was going to do anything and I got possibly the shortest rudest response I've ever had from him which is no it is not. Um, so I didn't need a county council meeting today I would have preferred to be working in my division preparing for Christmas um, because in North Hertfordshire we set up a food provision network last October before anybody had heard of the um, COVID-19 or any thoughts of a pandemic because way before then child poverty and the poverty of others was absolutely clear to us through universal credit, through family poverty and through homelessness and it's really a little bit ironic that after the ghastly debates we had a month or so ago about local government reorganisation in which we were told that a single unitary Hertfordshire would be best for all, that it was actually the district and borough councils that sorted out food provision for our young people at half term who are affected even more than they were clearly last October when North Hearts recognised the need for the voluntary sector and local authority to be working together. So can we please see some cooperation at its best? I'm delighted that the government has U-turned and I'm pleased that the County Council has decided have to have a special minute. meeting, Judy. have a special meeting to, to see the best way forward. I'm horrified as things are that the government has chosen to funnel the funding for this through the county council which has shown itself to be less responsive than any other organization in the county but i do ask that the proposed meeting um, of the panel does include the education panel as well because many schools are referring many young people to our food provision networks and i think that the education sector needs to be in that conversation I will be supporting the motion, uh, but wish I wasn't here and wish I was in my division doing valuable work. Thank you, Judy. Paul Zakowski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'll be uh, very, very brief. 
Um, I just wanted to respond to uh, Richard Roberts's diatribe against this particular meeting, um, because one of the things that he said was, what an utter waste of resources this is in the midst of a pandemic. Well, I, he should know, shouldn't he? Given that he's a member of an administration that wasted, what was it, £120,000, redirected officers' time for, away from dealing with the pandemic to deal with the um the situation uh, uh, that our leader, our council leader, has directed us towards um, in re local government reorganisation, putting officers' time into that rather than the pandemic, you actually should know, shouldn't you, Richard? Because you're part of that organisation, you're part of that administration. So don't be proselytising to us. It's not on. Have you finished? Fine. Sharon, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And, um, uh, you know, the administration can rattle on all they want. This could all have been avoided. We had a council meeting on the 20th of October. The issue was raised there. The response was that there was going to be a vote in Parliament on the 22nd of October, and the, the administration would decide then what they would do about this subject. The vote was taken on Thursday, the 22nd of October. Nothing happened with the County Council. So very quickly in Stevenage, we mobilised our play team. I would say our play service that provi has provided holiday activity and often food, although that's not their job, but they do it anyway, for young people in Stevenage during the school holidays for over 50 years. They've done that for over 50 years. We mobilised them. We got a project going. That project was ready to deliver food and activity packs to our young people by the evening of Friday, the 23rd of October. Uh, we had many community organisations approaching us saying that they were willing and ready to help us uh, to deliver that. There are 2,345 children on free school meals in Stevenage, um, at two, over 250 of them in my county division. We mobilised our service. We delivered at neighbourhood sessions so people didn't have to provide transport for themselves. We supported uh, over 400 families. We delivered food packs, packs directly to some of the vulnerable households in our areas. We fed 600 children. Each food bag provided enough ingredients to feed three children for five days. And we um, we packed uh, well over 7,000 individual food items. We had many donations from our residents. Um, the response from the community was astonishing and extraordinary. And I'm very grateful to Stevenage people and organisations for what they did. Um, but the fact is, they shouldn't have had to do that. Your government and this council had to be dragged kicking and screaming by a 23-year-old footballer to make to make sure that minute, children Sharon. in the sixth wealthiest country in the world don't go hungry in the school holidays. Shame on you. Thank you. Nick Hollinghurst. Thank you. I was a bit shocked by uh, the initial remarks from uh, David Williams, I'm afraid. Um, this is worthwhile. It's worthwhile in focusing on a problem and it's worthwhile in focusing on what local authorities are doing. The County Council doesn't grind to a halt because 78 elderly councillors held a meeting, you know. The staff are working well and hard and, and, and the officials are delivering uh, relief uh, and help. But two patterns have emerged. One is that this government dillies and dallies before blurting out some measures only to realise they haven't thought it through. Then they have to go and make fundamental changes to the original. No wonder people are all confused with what the government's trying to do. And this is one of the, one of the pro points that David Williams himself uh, brought up. A three-week delay while the government uh, suddenly realised they had to do more. We've got mechanisms for handling emergencies in this country. They've been in existence for years. Uh, it's been a function of the local authorities to deliver support and relief when needed, especially with regard to public health. But what is this government's first reaction? It's to take over central control and initially, at least, 
cut out the local authority mechanisms that are closest to the people. Well, now they're involving us a lot more, and that's good because we're the people with the boots on the ground. They should listen to us and they should use the mechanisms that are in place all along. The government persists in underusing local authorities, and I think we can all regret that. This is not just a crisis of public health. This is a crisis of leadership uh, at the government uh, and at the heart of government. And we in the local authorities are trying to take practical measures to remedy that. If the government eventually catches up with us, as it has done in this case, well, that's good. But let's not criticise local authorities have one minute. taking the initiative in, in the first place. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Maurice Bright. You're muted, Maurice. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Chairman. I would um, I'll take a slight exception at the, at the comments. Um, elderly, elderly councillors. I've still got a bit of life for me left. Uh, not a lot, but a bit. Um, Madam, Madam Chairman, there's been a lot. There's been a lot of beating of breasts and there's been a lot of rending of garments going on this morning. The reality is that um, hunger, poverty and our children some children not having enough to eat in lunchtime is not a new issue. This didn't suddenly arrive recently. We know it's been going on for quite some time, um, but matters are coming to the fore during COVID that perhaps people hadn't focused on before. We're seeing more about child sexual exploitation. We're seeing more about modern slavery, which has been hidden during COVID. And as people come out of lockdown, we hear more about those situations. And the reason why I mention that is because for those who are saying that this is a politicization of an issue because we're having an, e an EGM now, um, I can understand the point because this is up to us and say either kindly look, can we help we got children or get angry with us to discover that we're not doing anything about it or because they've got children and feel bad if their children are eating and others don't, that it's come as forward as it has. And I think it's right that Marcus Rashford gets credit, but so do our residents, so do our local councillors, so do some MPs who've pushed very, very hard at a local and national level that this is heard about. Um, because it's not just a case of saying one person's alerted us to a big problem, so of our residents, they're very concerned. So well done to Marcus Rashford, absolutely. But also to the very people who make up our communities who've not just been concerned, but have been helping out as well. I do have concerns about a voucher system. I think it's probably the easiest way of doing it. But at the end of the day, we need to be looking further down the line and having more work done about how we can educate children around food and ensure they're getting nutritious food rather than just Morris, necessarily have one yeah, minute. Thank you. Rather than just necessarily using a voucher where they can pick up a cold sandwich, a bag of crisps and a bar of Twix. You can feed the belly, but we need to find a way of starting to feed the mind as well. And I hope that once all this is out of the way, we can work out how we use our clubs um, that we have after school clubs, that kids can sit together and eat a hot meal and learn about food like we learned about food from our parents and when we were younger. So I'd like to see a lot less talk and a lot more action. And I hope that action can come between all of us. We need to lead on this, Hertfordshire, but all of us, um, not just as councillors, mm -hmm. not just as representatives of our communities, but as parents too. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Ralph Sangster. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'd just like to uh, come back on some uh, comments that have been made by uh, opposition uh, members, um, in particular, uh, the, the comment re in, in response to um, David uh, David's uh, initial um, uh, opening on on this subject uh, and his 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 uh, somewhat uh, uh, ill-tempered uh, response to the fact that David indicated that he had uh, provided uh, the opposition leaders with the opportunity to. Um, moved back from this meeting and offered them the opportunity to take it through the panel and cabinet uh, process. Um, uh, and, I'm, uh, and as members will be, uh, sorry, as members will be aware, he shared the, the, the uh, contents of the, of the letter he sent to um, 
uh, to the opposition leaders in the chat line, but uh, clearly those who are watching will not be able to uh, to see that. But I'd just like to uh, indicate to them that, that he did uh, provide that offer to move through the cabinet and panel system. Um, it, it wasn't accepted and, and we are where we are now. Um, I'd also like to just say a quick word about the uh, proposal that we've wasted money in relation to um, uh, local government reform. Uh, I think that we, we've got a, a very short memory in so much as the, the trajectory of, lo of central government in relation to, uh, central, uh, to local government reform was quite clear at the time we instigated the, co the, um, the, cons uh, the consultant's uh, assessment of, of our position on that. And, and I think uh, in hindsight, uh, uh, perhaps the, uh, the government have, have moved on uh, or at least delayed where we're going. But the fact that we did the work when we did it will not be lost, will be uh, will be available to us. And had we not done it and the government's prop proposals gone through uh, at a, a pace uh, that was expected, we would have been probably uh, accused of being negligent for not having done so. So I think that's a bit disingenuous on, on behalf of the opposition to bring that up at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Nigel Quinton. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think I mean I, I I do want to get back to the uh, the, the the substance of what we our motion proposed, um, but I do feel obliged to um, come back on what Ralph has again reiterated about the process leading to this meeting. Um, as Stephen has already pointed out, um, he responded to David's letter that's in the chat, and it wasn't his response wasn't replied to. Um, at any point, this meeting could have been avoided by simply setting a time for the panel to meet, um, which the first we've heard of this is this morning, um, and or also shortening this dramatically by simply agreeing the motion. The substance of our motion is very brief. It is that the council pledges to extend this commitment through to the Easter holidays and the summer holidays. Um, that is not an unreasonable ask. We are still going to be in the same situation by summer, by all accounts. Even listening to the experts on the vaccines last night on the news, mo the most optimistic projection is that by the summer we will start to see vaccinations rolled out at a scale that will make a real difference. So this is not something that's going to go away. And as others have mentioned, and thank you, Maurice Bright, for such a very heartwarming contribution, absolutely agree with everything you said. Um, you know, we, this is not about petty point scoring. This is about shining light on a serious situation that the government has continually failed to act quickly enough on, as it has with so many other things. And I just want to finish with just one other point, um, or two other points, sorry. One is, I agree with David Williams in one thing he said, and that is the response of this county to the crisis has been amazing and I think we are all duly proud of the officers and everybody involved who's who stepped up to the plate since the beginning of the year. At the step back review of COVID topic group last Friday we heard tremendous work that was going on with the with our partners in the voluntary sector. One minute Quentin. Thank you and long may that continue. Um, but he, I cannot understand how he can be proud of this government and just lastly one thing that Marcus Rashford has continually called for which still remains unmet is for free school meals to be provided for all children whose families are on universal credit or equivalent. And I do think that's something that we should be pushing the government to adopt. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nigel. Fiona Guest. Thank you, Chairman. Not all members of this authority are elderly. A good number of us are of working age and have had to adjust our work patterns and cut our hours at work to be able to participate properly in this authority. This meeting is frankly a waste of time. The government has given county nearly £2.5 million. We are doing something with that. We are providing vouchers to the value of £15 per week to each child in the county who receives free school meals from Christmas 2020 to half term to summer half term 2021. We don't need to talk about it. 
We can just clap on and do it. Thank you, Fiona. Sarah Bedford. Sarah Bedford. Sorry, I, I'm speaking. My mute is off. But I seem to be unheard. Can you hear me now, Chairman? I can hear you, Sarah. Thank you. I'll start again. Thank you. I was totally astounded by the comments from David Williams and in particular Richard Roberts at the start of this debate. I do not consider that it is vainglorious or conceited to look out for our children. I consider it to be compassionate and just. Sharon Taylor was quite right about the timing. This could have all been dealt with at the last council meeting. It was not. I do not see this as a waste of my time. It is an additional call on my time, certainly, but one that I believe is worthwhile. This is why I'm in public service. There are two reactions to the plight of parents unable to feed their children well. The first group look at such families and think, there but for the grace of God go I. The second wants to pretend that it couldn't happen to them because they are in some way more virtuous and harder working than those families in need. The funding that comes from the government should be going more directly to families, not partly through activity schemes. Again, it appears that families are being split into deserving and less deserving. Those who can attend and will attend holiday schemes are deserving. Those children being shunted from one informal childcare arrangement to another, whilst their parents take on a portfolio of minimum wage jobs, are not. COVID is just a symptom of the poverty and child hunger and malnutrition in this country. Children were hungry before and they will be after. They are just more visible now. This council has reserves for a rainy day. Well, now there is a thunderstorm and we can all see the children that are hungry. And as Paul Zukowski said, a six figure sum was used and a senior officer seconded to support the pet project of the administration. Now that was vainglorious and conceited. Hearts should be leading the way, not following grudgingly behind. The government funding should be the beginning and not the end. I'm proud to support this motion and to support children in need across the county. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Lynn Chesterman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm partly following up on what Sarah's just said. Um, I'm not going into it all what's going on. Should we have had the meeting? Should we not? We've all got our own views. But there is a lot made in this about the fit, fed and read. Now, are we actually going to put more staff time into changing this? Because if you aren't aware, and I'm reading from Hertfordshire's own um, advertisement for this year, Fit, Fed and Red. It's for children aged 8 to 11 who are eligible for free school meals. Now, a lot of our kids who need meals are outside of that age group and can't attend these sort of groups. What else? What other way are we going to do it? Because as Sarah said about informal childcare, I am someone, um, we are performing, uh, providing informal childcare, despite the fact that the government tells us we're vulnerable, but suddenly, hey, we're exempt from that. So we must realise that not all kids are in proper childcare or in childcare settings. And I just want to know how far this scheme is going to spread and do we have the resources to do it? Because if not, all what we're discussing today is going to fail. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Eric Buckmaster. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, we are all aware that this crisis is something none of us have experienced in our life lifetime. But um, given the extraordinary circumstances, as Nigel said earlier, 
we have previously and collectively said how well the council and officers have responded, working across all of the local authorities, the health world, voluntary sector, but above all, putting our vulnerable residents and families at the centre of what we're doing. And throughout all of this, Hearts Help has been geared up to support and signpost residents on a wide variety of matters, including financial issues and including issues of hunger. So I don't agree with Stephen's earlier comment that children are supported except during the holidays. That isn't the case. And we have on many occasions also publicly confirmed our commitment to families. And now we have the additional 2.49 million government funding. Um, this underpins that commitment. I was also surprised by the disparaging comments earlier about the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. I'm sure the many cafes and restaurants affected by COVID welcomed the opportunity to bring in additional business during this difficult time. And as the leader said earlier, the Lib Dems called this extraordinary meeting of the council. And I now, perhaps along with many of our residents, am wondering what is the real purpose of the Lib Dem motions and amendments when all of the commitments are already asserted and we could all be getting on with supporting our residents rather than unnecessary additional discussion today. And as was said, we don't need a full council to arrange a panel. And many of the comments today could have been made at that. And finally, Nigel Bell earlier said, what is going on? Why don't we just get on with it? And Judy Billings seemed to echo that. Well, that's precisely what we're trying to do. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Eric. And we are now going to have the first of our five minute breaks. The clock says 11.04 and I would expect you all to be back. Uh, please leave your machines tuned in um, and we start restart at 11.10. Thank you.
Right, thank you everybody. Um, I've now got, I've got two more speakers um, listed, Adam Mitchell and Teresa Heritage. Unless anybody's got a desperate to speak um, or has something very different to say, we'll then move on, be looking to uh, Mark Watkin and his right of reply. And I've just had late notice of Steve Jarvis. So Adam Mitchell, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I speak to you today as a former recipient of uh, free school meals, in, in fact, and I sort of that was in the early 90s. It was under a conservative government and a conservative county council, if that's of interest to anybody. Um, I fully understand that if you give people a helping hand, then they can go on and achieve or at least have the potential to achieve. And, and I understand that. And that's all good. This the frustrating thing about this for me is that this meeting will not put an extra meal on a star, you know, a, a hungry person's plate. It's a waste of resources. It's after the fact. And I, I don't see the benefit of this meeting. You know, the, the, the resources, the money spent on this meeting could be used to help those who most need it rather than just this posturing, which is extremely frustrating. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Theresa Heritage. Thank you, Chairman. Um, oops, can you see me? There we go. Thank you. Um, I was just going to um, respond to Lynn's comments or questions around um, the Holiday Club. Um, just thought that that, that might be quite in, in useful. Um, at the moment, Lynn, we are focusing obviously around more than food. And we are working already uh, with Hertfordshire Sports Partnership to look at how we can roll out um, more to more children. Um, and a part of that work will be talking to um, local councils. I've heard lots of interesting stuff here this morning um, to see actually what we can all do together, because that is what it's all about. It's about what we can do together. Um, and um, help all the, our young people. So at the centre of what we do will be the children that really are in need in the county, and indeed, actually, every child in the county, so, so that they can um, thrive during this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Theresa. Steve Jarvis. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, Adam Mitchell talked about this being a matter of posturing, but the reason this has all arisen is because the government wasn't prepared to do what they should have done because it was proposed by the opposition and they weren't prepared to do it until public opinion and Marcus Rushford forced them to do what they knew they should always have done. Now they've put forward some welcome funding. Uh, they've not, I understand, yet provided all the details that go with it for the 170 million, let alone for the 220 for next year, which comes completely uh, without any sort of backup information, I understand. So why are we here this morning? Well, I'd rather think that the reaction that we've seen from some, some of the uh, Conservative leadership illustrates why we're here this morning. Eric Buckmaster asked, what was the purpose of the Liberal Democrat motion? And the answer might well be that it's kind of similar to the purpose of the motion that the Conservatives are about to propose next. We've heard that Richard Roberts is not prepared to debate the issue on this motion, but he will on the next one. It seems to me that the leadership of the County Council is adopting exactly the same strategy that the government adopted before it was forced to change its position. That what matters is not what's suggested, but who suggests it. If, if people were really concerned about minimising the time and cost of this, this meeting, so if you only guess to get on and do whatever else it is she wants to do this morning, uh, then David Williams could clearly have said, uh, well, we accept this motion. Uh, he might have some issues with a few words here and there, but that's not, the, not the, uh, the strategy he's adopted. The strategy is to say that this is a terrible motion. He's going to vote it down. Uh, and then in a few moments time, he's going to stand up and propose an almost, almost, uh, uh, or certainly a very similar, if not identical motion, uh, proposed by the Conservatives, which, which they're then all going to vote for. So there is no doubt that there is posturing this morning, but the posturing probably starts after we finish debating this motion and move on to the next one. Thank you, Steve. Now, 
Richard Roberts, you've got your hand up and in fact you've already spoken in the debate, so I'm assuming your hand is up by mistake. Uh, I raised my hand and then I lowered it again. It's actually lowered, uh, Chairman, thank you. OK, fine. Um, right, then, if there are no other speakers, I would like to invite Mark Watkin to exercise his right of reply. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Well, why did we call this motion? Because on October the 20th, our original motion calling on this council to move to the government or push the government to support and provide free school meals and support Marcus Rashford was turned down. That set the tone, I'm afraid, for what has then gone on subsequently. Um, I have no, I am proud of the fact that we have brought this motion to the council. And I'm also delighted that it is having a very large audience watching it and listening to it. The question of child poverty is one of the major problems facing this country. 4.2 million children are in poverty at the moment, and that's 600,000 more than there were in 2011. Child poverty is increasing faster than any other area in the country in terms of hardship. So it is crucial that this council steps up, accepts its responsibility, and moves ahead. The government is not doing what it's claiming. It's claiming to be able to provide support, and yet its support is vague and unclear. There's £220 million coming forward for the, uh, the, sport, the, the sports fund, but there is no clarity as to what that money is for, and almost certainly it won't be for uh, the children entirely with free school meals, and it doesn't start till April the 1st. The £170 million scheme stops on March the 31st, which actually is just before the school holidays. So, of course, this council with some more responsibility, has to step in and fill that gap. So thank you for that, for doing it. And I will absolutely compliment the Council for what it's done in all the various schemes it's helped uh, through this period. But the truth of the matter remains is that this discussion is long overdue. And I, I mean, I won't attempt to go through all the various points that are made, except to say that the general theme from the administration appears to be this is One a One minute, Mark. Thing. A big one. One minute. Thank you. That this is a time waste. Well, in fact, quite clearly, by the nature of this debate, it has never been more important that we discuss this issue. Um, our motion is sensible and reasonable. We might have debated how long the funding goes on for, and that could be a useful thing. But to actually argue that this is a pointless meet, uh, meeting is clearly uh, hypocrisy and a failure to, to, to accept that this is a matter that needed wider discussion. I'm proud of what we've done, and thank you everybody, particularly on our side, but also Maurice Bright, I have to say in particular, for, for putting the context of why this meeting is so important. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'd now invite Stephen Giles Medhurst to exercise your right, right of reply, Stephen, and you have three minutes. A debate about child poverty and food hunger is not a waste of time, and however many people say it is. If nothing else, this meeting and this debate, and the debate that will ensure on the second motion, which is virtually identical to what we have all proposed, highlights the issue and brings it to the public attention first and foremost. And hopefully it will therefore not be forgotten. But I do want to make it very, very clear. I sent two emails to David Williams asking when a special meeting of the panel would be called. Neither were responded to, say, a date had been agreed for it. Indeed, the council's own standards haven't been adhered to. In the, the date is supposed to be consulted with opposition spokespersons. So we now have a meeting on the 26th of November, and I will amend the amendment in a minute in relation to that. Equally, as leader of the council, having seen the amended motion on Friday evening, they could have emailed me or indeed picked the phone up and said, look, we're going to have a special meeting of the panel, can we forget the council meeting, which hadn't been promised in terms of the special meeting, uh, and move just and debate this at the special cabinet panel? No such call was made. I have to say, I admire, it's odd for me perhaps to say this, the One Nation Conservative speech from Maurice Bright. That is true leadership in terms of this particular issue, and it is responsible, restrained and right. 
what is quite clear is we do have a crisis and, and COVID has highlighted it. And Morris may have noticed it more than others in terms of his role as leader of the district council. But it's certainly now in the public foremost mind. The government's own food czar has said that needs a £1.2 billion programme to help those in need. The £170 million, the £220 million is just a start. But at least it is a start and will address some of the issues. It is disappointing that yes, we're having to have a rather rancorous debate from some members, but it's not an unnecessary debate because it's a debate that is perhaps long overdue. And One on minute, basis, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. And on that basis, the motion as we stand that we put forward supports what the government's come up with. Yeah, it could be more. It could be doing a bit more. We need more details. And it's interesting if you only guess seems to know exactly what the administration is going to do, and therefore the whole thing's a waste of time. Interesting to know what reports that comes from, because certainly in the briefing from officers, which we only had at four, four o'clock last Friday, they were still working on a lot of the details to, and were having to rush through the programme. That's unfortunate. But I would hope that putting aside this Runkers debate, we can move forward, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, we now move to the to the voting system. And if I can ask you all to turn on your chat function if it's not on already. And you should see shortly at the bottom of your screen the voting position. Right now, I'm hoping that you've now got um, a screen that uh, tells you uh, you can vote for, against or abstain. So touch one of those buttons and press submit, please. And we're voting on the Liberal Democrat motion. Voting. Chairman, I can't see the voting box in the chat box. Scroll down. Yeah, Chairman. I tried that. I still can't see it. Hang on. Well, then go the other way. Chair, I had to scroll up to find it. Yeah. If you scroll down and you can't find it, then scroll up. Are you OK now, Sharon? No, I'm. Hang on. It keeps having pop-ups in the chat box, which means I can't see what's happening. Right. If you yeah. tap on the pop-ups, they should clear. Oh, there we are. Chairman, if if the member That's takes it, done the, it. Top, the top you. pane of, 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 of the uh, Teams meeting, that is where it's got Microsoft Teams, puts a finger on it if it's a, 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 an active screen, you can drag that pane right across to clear those damn pop-ups which keep obscuring your chat box in the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, Richard. Right. One of which was your vote, Richard. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> Chairman, I was just going to say we wouldn't have had the pop-ups if people had voted in the vote rather than putting their vote in the chat, which you specifically told us at the beginning of the meeting. That was my point. Not ignoring you, just thinking about that remark.
Chair, is there any way of knowing that we've voted? Because I can see uh, Richard Thake, Alan Plancy and Michael Muir's votes um, registered on my chat, but I can't see mine or anybody else's. If I may, Chair, Judy, if you scroll back to where it says how you should vote, your vote should still be coloured. It's Dreza, not Judy. Sorry, Dreza. Your, if okay. you scroll back to where you voted, it should still be coloured, so it shows that you voted. I did the chat because I couldn't find the vote, but I found it. Oh, OK. Yeah. Sorry. Can I ask for a little bit of silence at the moment? We're just trying oh. to work through things and it's a bit distracting with all your voices, although I know they're intended to be helpful voices. So if you can just hold on for a moment and then we will we will be able to uh, get everything sorted out to everybody's satisfaction, I'm sure. Right. The vote is now closed and shortly you should see in the middle of your screens a voting sheet which will show the names of members. It's alphabetical according to your Christian name. So Adam Mitchell, here we are, I can see it now. And that was, shows who has voted. And I believe we have 74 responses. Colette, it should be a little bit larger. I agree with you. <laughs> Try. Now, I say if you, sometimes if you pinch the screen outwards, it, it'll make it a bit larger. Um, and of course, I'm doing which some, what some of you have done, thinking why aren't it at the end? But of course, I, mine is listed under C for Colette, so I'm not used to looking at myself at the top end of the cat of, a, of an alphabet of an alphabetical list. You're so. lucky you can read it, Chair. We have to peer at it very closely, Drida, uh, as you can see from me, if you look at me on the screen. <laughs> through the bottom of my bifocals. Well, I've noticed at least one vote is incorrectly recorded. Cat Collect, sorry, it's, it's Stephen Giles Medhurst. Um, sorry, which one are you referring to, Stephen? If you could scroll down to Karen Hastrick. Yes. You'll find that's incorrectly recorded. Because I missed it. It's, that, it's so small typing, it's difficult when it's scrolling. So Yes, Karen Hastrick's incorrectly recorded. No, so it's not incorrect. How do you know she didn't vote that way? I do know. She, Karen needs to say. Exactly. Right. right. I think Karen... I think and Karen, sorry, yeah, I um, did put into the, the chat feed. Yes, I am for our motion. You are for the motion, right. So, Quentin, the, can we accept, yeah. uh, amend her vote, please? Right. Are there any other anomalies that people wish to raise before this is finalised, finally finalised? Nope. Right. Then... That, mo that motion has fallen and we move on to um, the next part of item four, which is the conservative motion. Might just bear with us a moment while the officers reset, as it were. Right, and please close your chat box because we're now back to the hands situation. Okay, everybody composed. Fine. Right. Um, I'd now like to invite David Williams to move the Conservative motion. And David, you have five minutes. 
Chair, thank you for that. Uh, I won't take all that time. For the reasons I set out earlier, I commend the motion at 4.2 on the order paper and urge Council to reject the Lib Dem amendments. Just to underscore that that motion uh, from the Conservative group was, of course, submitted in response to the now defunct uh, amend, uh, motion that was put forward by the, uh, the Lib Dem group. A couple of things I just want to say reflecting on some of the um, uh, debate earlier. I think it is important that uh, members and uh, the public recognise that Hertfordshire County Council's support for families, uh, for families in need of support with food and other essentials, is not limited to free school meals. I think it's very important that we all recognise that there is all manner of different support that's provided by the Money Advice Unit, um, the provision of food for food banks. Um, there's a whole range of support that we've been providing um, before and during the pandemic, and it's not simply related to uh, the provision of free school meals. The other thing which I would just highlight is uh, in response to Stephen's uh, points of order, um, I have shared um, on Teams the two emails that I sent to Stephen, one on the morning of the announcement by the government, um, suggesting now that we needed to focus on developing our proposals for discussion at panel. I then also on the 11th, uh, once we had guidance on the scheme, uh, again reiterated that invitation. Um, Following that, of course, I know that the Lib Dem group um, have had the opportunity to see the proposals, the work in progress uh, that our officers are working on, and we need to get those into a position where we can uh, discuss them at panel, and the first opportunity for us to be able to do that will be the 26th of uh, November. So hopefully that meeting can go ahead then. Very happy, of course, that uh, that might be a joint meeting of both uh, the children's and education panels. But primarily, I just want to underscore that I commend the motion at 4.2 on the order paper and urge Council to reject the Lib Dem amendments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Can I invite Theresa Heritage to second? Yes, Madam Chairman, thank you. Um, I formally second and reserve my right to reply. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I invite Stephen Giles Medhurst to move the Liberal Democrat Amendment, number one? And in so doing, Madam Chair, I shall want to amend now the last paragraph in light of what Councillor Williams said at the beginning, to amend, to, to read, this council therefore notes, the leader of the council has now agreed to an urgent meeting, the children's, young people's and um, families panel and the education libraries and localism panel uh, on the 26th of November. And I believe my seconder will consent to that amendment. So that puts in place as an amendment and I would have hoped that David could, with um, some gratitude or uh, semblance of sensibility, accept that amendment because that's exactly what he has just said. I've also circulated to all members of council, uh, at least one, I can circulate the other email that I sent to David requesting when the special meeting of the panels would take place, which I sent uh, to David at uh, 17.36 on the 11th of November and to which I've yet to have any reply. So it's disingenuous to suggest that we knew about a special panel meeting when David has not. And as members of council know, but perhaps the public do not, when a panel meets that allows opposition members to come forward, when the council council count, council count cabinet meets, no member of any opposition party is permitted to speak. So the final decision made by the cabinet, opposition members are specifically excluded from any discussion. So let's put that in perspective. Uh, and we would have been happy had I had confirmation that there would be a special meeting of the panel to discuss all these issues, which I had not we could have reconsidered the issue about having this meeting. But I'm pleased we've had this because we've highlighted the various issues in relation to this. David is right in one respect. It is not just about free school meals. It is about stopping disadvantaged children and vulnerable families going hungry and suffering, which, as I've already said, why, in fact, Henry Dimbury, the co-founder of Lyon Restaurants and the government's food czar, not necessarily a Liberal Democrat supporter, I might say, uh, has put forward programmes for holiday activity 
and food program costing 500 million a year, 100 million on healthy food vouchers and 670 million as an extension of the free schools meal program. And it's pleased to see that over 22,200 children in Hertfordshire receive or would receive free school meals and they do need to benefit out of these programmes. But the government needs to go further than what is committed. This is a start of that process of addressing food poverty. Uh, I hope that David will now, given that I've amended uh, the last paragraph, I cannot see why he would disagree recognising the significance of Margaret Rushford's achievement in highlighting this issue. Uh, the rest of the, of, of the motion is as he's, as he's already tabled. By accepting those two, we could go forward, I would hope, with some common purpose and some agreement. We will have. I'm sorry, someone's interrupting me. Then I couldn't hear. I'm sorry, someone's interrupting me. Then I couldn't hear what they was. And I would hope we go forward some common purpose. And I would hope we go forward some common purpose. I hope actually at the panel. We seem to be having a feedback issue somewhere. Can everybody check that there? Uh, I'm just about to say, oh. to, I think it was Kareen and she's now gone on mute, so it's all OK. Thanks, Richard. Sorry, Stephen, uh, we'll give you a little bit of extra time because you're, no, I, I, you were interrupted. Thank, thank you very um, much. Uh, that's gracious of you, Colette. Thank you. I would hope, given you know, I've now amended that last paragraph to reflect what the leader of the council has said. And and if he doesn't disagree with what I've said in relation to the new paragraph to Marcus Rashford, we could go forward and agree uh, this is an amended motion without having to formulate a, a, a vote on this. If not, clearly we will vote on it. That's disappointing because I, I would hope that we can get some common purpose despite um, some misinformation, I'll put it no stronger than that, or I might use stronger words elsewhere, uh, about the, where we, why we've got to this process. But above all, this meeting, I think, has now put this firmly and foremost in the front of the council's agenda. Yes, it is doing a very good job in all areas in relation to COVID, but clearly there are other issues. Indeed, as Morris said, we need to be responsible about dealing with all the issues around this and we need to move forward. Thank you. I so move. Thank you, Stephen. Now, um, I'd like to invite Mark Watkins to... Um, um, Second and formally consent to the amendment that you've just proposed, I expect. So, you, Mark, you have three minutes. Um, I won't take, I won't be speaking now. I reserve my right, except to say that I hope that the leader of the council accepts our offer and uh, we can move ahead to a very quick vote and a unanimous vote on the outcome, please. Thank you. Um, Right, so could I invite invite um, the lead speaker for the Labour group, which I presume will be Judy Billings, to speak? Thank you, Chair. I already said that uh, I didn't really see the point of debating this all day when we should be out in our communities making it happen. Um, and that's the focus of my attention at the moment. Um, I do hope that the amendment um, from the Liberal Democrat group is graciously uh, woven into the Conservatives' um, motion. That way we can agree an outcome and get on with our work in our communities, uh, which would be to the very great good fortune of all of us, I think. That's all I need to say now. I gave my views earlier today about the absolute shambles that the government has put us in and the desperately slow response that we had from the county council over half term which amounted to nothing i remain disappointed about those things but really do hope that we can now find a way forward thank you very much thank you judy now 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 I'd like to open the debate to any other speakers do i have a notification of any other speakers Richard Roberts. There we are. Good. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim, when I speak to support our motion at 4.2, this pandemic has brought the best out in people. Volunteers, more than 10,000 joined Team Hearts at the start of the pandemic, 
6,000 found meaningful roles and to this day support their communities in so many, in so many ways. More than 6,000 shielded residents were cared for directly with over 120,000 food parcels, medicine drops, even walking the dog. 3,300 were sustained from the heart of communities where grants met volunteers, met local government, met health, met great willing to do what felt right. Hearts Help was beefed up to a seven day a week coordinating superstar. Hill, and it's still going, Hills are Meals on Wheels, Vol Sector Exemplar in the county boosted its delivery of hot food across Hertfordshire. The Money Advice Unit, from April to October, it secured benefits of £11.6 million. Hearts Help has been able to distribute crisis grants and food vouchers to families, including during half term, with the CAB offering invaluable advice and guidance. Many charities supported by the County Council. All our councils, our care and age support, our volunteers, our health services have pulled together, have gone the extra mile and worked together like never before. Three and a half million pounds of funding is supporting all of this activity right through to the end of March. Planned with partners for effective reach and delivery. We have supported care providers and care workers through HCPA recognised nationally for going above and beyond. COVID has caused our economy to contract. More families will be stressed. I think we are all agreed on this and recognise this today. But I will be bringing shortly proposals to my panel to ensure we don't just beat COVID, but do right by our residents who may need more help with mental health, domestic abuse, debts and housing advice. Our VCS has shone during this pandemic. We can do more together. And that Which was clearly stated minute. at these. Thank you, Chairman. That was clearly came up at the um, the excellent scrutiny meeting last Friday. And as we said on the 28th of October, we've done before and since. We will provide every possible support to ensure no family goes hungry this winter, this Easter or next spring. We will go further in our support and use the government grant yes with food but with our outstanding partners to make sure families get through this awful time Still. and that really does echo some of the thoughts that david williams said at the start of this debate thank you chairman thank you richard um terry Duris. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I want to start by just reminding everybody that it's not just about food, um, but it's also about resources as well. And one of the things that Hertfordshire has uh, done in via education is supply a large number of laptops um, from the government and direct um, to help families uh, continue and children continue their education. But these are unprecedented circumstances. And it's led this year to the Conservative government providing a food service outside the school term for the first time to children who would normally be in receipt of free school meals. During the lockdown from March, county colleagues and our school catering company HCL worked tirelessly with our schools to supply and deliver nutritious food to all children entitled to free school meals. Where children were not in school, those, those schools made arrangements for parents and carers to collect lunches. And when this was not possible, food packs were actually delivered to the homes. The boxes contained some fresh fruit and vegetables, and this continued into the summer holidays for schools that requested it. And I've seen a number of appreciative notes of thanks from schools to Hearts Catering Limited, and I'm very proud of the work that they and all our colleagues working in our great schools under severe pressure and strain have achieved. It's worth mentioning that there are two types of free school meals, those for eligible pupils based on family circumstances and the universal infant free school meals, which benefits all other children in reception year one and two, irrespective of household income. And that's available to all children. Let us not also forget that the government funded schools to provide vouchers for food, either directly or via the Eden Red scheme, enabling every parent to provide food for their children during the summer holiday period. And in September, further provision was made for children at home to receive food 
uh, packs containing ingredients. I want to Terry, turn now you to have our, one minute. I want to turn now to our plans for the Christmas break. Um, the County Council have already commenced plans and there's every reason to believe that these will be presented in greater detail to the appropriate panel. The details of the government white, uh, white pay, uh, winter grant scheme came after the requirements, but working with councillor heritage and officers, we have carefully looked at a range of options for the most efficient and effective delivery of more than 23,000 children over the Christmas and half term period until 20, 31st of March 2021. And yes, we will be making plans to support young people and families using our holiday activities and food programme. Our plan, our planning will ensure that no child or vulnerable family will go hungry during school holidays. We are currently working on the logistics of the voucher scheme, and it may be that we'll have to enlist some help from schools in delivering this. But it, that is an element that we have to do, and we will make sure that it is done. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Well timed. Asif Khan. Thank you for giving the opportunity to speak um, uh, on this uh, debate. Um, what I would like to do is just thank uh, all those who stepped in where the government had miserably failed during the uh, half term. Uh, I volunteered uh, with food banks and I was packing food and delivering um, during half term to families that were needed. So can I just thank the unprecedented response from charities, uh, for example, in Watford, you had Save a Day and One Vision that stepped up. Businesses, restaurants that came in and again stepped in where the government had failed. Individuals, residents associations volunteered and came in. It was quite unprecedented, their response and quite disgust against the government's uh, failure to support uh, the most vulnerable within our society. And, I also welcome the U-turn, the U-turn, which was uh, a long time in coming. And I think this is something uh, we need to now start looking at the details. Vouchers are certainly not the most perfect way of solving this particular issue. But what I would like to do is work forward, look forward in the county. I think both um, uh, Terry and uh, had mentioned that needs to work with partners that delivered. Churches responded, mosques uh, responded, synagogues and temples all responded. They've developed networks and it's important that these networks are used and the county works with these charities, these organisations that have come in and helped and done so much where the government had failed. So going forward, I think it's so important and all of us, I think, I believe that we need to make food poverty history. Let's work together to get this sorted. Thank you very much, Asif. Annie Brewster. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as many have said, child poverty and good health uh, go much further than only hunger. We all know multiple aspects of inequality needs addressing at a young age. And I'd like to add a bit of narrative in my capacity as a board member on the Heart Sports Partnership about our combined trailblazing fit, fed and red scheme you've heard about earlier. First run in 2018 for eight to 11 year olds who are eligible for free school meals. The collaboration between Hearts County Council, the Fire Service, Hearts Sports Partnership, the Library Service, Hearts Catering Limited, University of Hertfordshire and Families First who make the referrals via children's centres and our intensive family support teams. It's born out of the Department of Education's Street Games programme, the Fit and Fed, but Hertfordshire has gone a stage further to add um, a, the reading element, a fun way to increase literacy skills in an unschool-like atmosphere. Run over the Easter and summer holidays in 10 fire stations across Hertfordshire, it runs for four weeks with four hours a day, made up of two hours of physical activity by way of fun games, um, led by University of Hertfordshire community sports ambassadors, one hour of hot nutritious meal prepared by off-site by Hertfordshire Catering Limited and one hour of fun education by the Hearts Library Service. It's all designed to counter triple inequalities of holiday hunger, physical activity and social isolation. 
Although members might have visited these schemes, you might not have heard some of the parental feedback. The fit element, um, some of the things said, the physical activity has reduced hyperactivity at home and made children calmer, sleep better, better relationships with family and siblings. Often these children don't do sport at school, but they've learned through confidence through these fun games and less bored, less bad behaviour. The fed element, children widening their taste, not just chicken nuggets, families not always having to cook uh, a meal every night for them, learning about nutrition. One minute, and Annie. Choices. Yeah. Read the fun workbooks. Um, this is really encouraged them reading at home, less computer games, uh, greater confidence for senior school transfer and what's expected of them. It's very important. Many children dread um, the social isolation of holidays. Often they only wander a short distance from their houses without any friends. And this free of charge holiday experience has made new friends, new experiences, promoted interpersonal skills. Met strong role models in the fire service. Also, the police have brought police cars, so they've learnt relationships for them going forward in the future. Um, now, going forward, I hear Lynn and everyone else, and you're absolutely right, but discussions are going forward with executive members and officers to expand this, um, this holiday activity scheme. And I think it could include things like arts and crafts and very importantly, cooking advice. For instance, how to produce healthy foods yourself, how many ingredients to get into an omelette, a way to be more self-sufficient going forward into adult lives. Um, this fits very well with Henry Dimbledy's national food strategy and the government's uh, new obesity you're, strategy. You're out and of time, money. The drive for extended holiday time. activities. I've done. I've done. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margaret Eames Patterson. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Margaret. Sorry, I just had a little problem with my microphone. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just really wanted to, I haven't said anything in this debate so far. I, it has. It was very disappointing that uh, the government didn't respond ready for half term. But I want to just be positive in, in moving forward and thank David Williams particularly for the joined up cabinet panel to have both uh, children, young people and families and education together. Because I think in Hertfordshire we do really need child poverty intelligence we can do better at child po poverty intelligence by our joined up knowledge and the schools do have knowledge about children that are um, missing out and uh, I really do think we do need that uh, joined up knowledge from both education and from the children's schools and families panel and I just wanted to point out that whilst I, I I agree with Anna's enthusiasm about what we can do through Fit, Fed and Red, and I was one of the first to support uh, that that scheme in 2018 in Hatfield. It started in Hatfield. But I need to point out, um, as a statistician, uh, epidemiologist, that they are missing out on some children. They are only doing the uh, 8 to 11 year olds at the moment, and there are children that really do need support who are aged 5 to 7, and 12 to 16 and I would really like us to look at those gaps to see what we could do to support those children at this moment with the money the government has given. Um, I, I really uh, look forward to the panel on November the 26th and we obviously do welcome this U-turn and uh, giving children school for uh, the, the free school meals but there are children that do miss out and often schools are aware of it so that's what I would really like us to flag up. Thank you. Thank you Chair. Thank you Margaret. Um, Ralph Sangster. Thank you Chair. Uh, I would like to revisit the, the comments made by the Leader of the Council in his response to the earlier Liberal Democrat motion to ensure that those listening are no doubt whatsoever of this council's commitment to support children and young people. Of the 170 million initial funding package provided by government to Hertfordshire, we, to Hertfordshire, we received 2.49 million for the period up to the 31st of March. The council will be ensuring that holiday time free school meals are provided up to and including the Whitson break 2021 which goes beyond the initial funding package timeframe of the 31st of March. 
Uh, in respect of the 2021-22 period, our commitment will be, as it has always been, that no child in Hertfordshire need go hungry. When the full implications of the government's £220 million fa funding package for the period 2021 is clarified and we have greater certainty on the government's position, we will then review how we address free school meals as part of a much larger spectrum of support beyond the wits and half term for children and young people. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Lynn Chesterman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to come back briefly. Margaret's touched on it, but Annie, um, when you spoke about the Fit, Fed and Red, I mean, it's a fantastic scheme and nobody will not that. It's brilliant. But this motion actually implies that's the only way forward with the after schools club. And I'm actually wondering out of the 22,200 children who need free school meals of all age, how many did that scheme actually cater for? And my suspicion is that it is a very small percentage. And my worry is about the percentage who didn't fit into that scheme. So whilst I applaud everything that's being done, please don't let us think this is the panacea because I am not um, satisfied and reassured that this is the way forward and this is the only way. And I do worry about those missing out, particularly the older children, because they seem to be falling between the gaps. And I think a 15 year old plus or a 12 year old plus still deserves to be fed. So um, can we just make sure this is not the only way we go? Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Eric Buckmaster, and then we'll be holding a break. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just briefly, in response to Asif's comments, uh, and uh, I don't think this has been mentioned, um, I wanted to make clear that no political group here has the monopoly in supporting our residents, either as councillors or volunteers. Uh, I'm sure all of us here became councillors because we wanted to make a difference and are all closely connected to our communities. In that knowledge, I want to remind everyone of the member locality grant, which was uplifted by 50% to give us all the discretion to support our residents and community groups in the best way, a bespoke way, appropriate for our particular areas and their circumstances in supporting vulnerable children, families and those children. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Eric. And as we're now just a shade off 12 o'clock, I will call a, a five minute break now and we'll re reconvene.
Right, welcome back everybody. It's five past twelve and we'll carry on uh, with, with the debate and I'd like to ask um, Dee Hart to speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I can only speak regarding my own Waltham Cross division in the borough of Broxbourne. In the borough, in the Broxbourne division, we have a multi-agency approach, working with local faith groups, housing associations, local charities, food banks, etc. The list is endless. Council staff, volunteers and councillors have worked really hard to support all residents during this pandemic and will continue to do so going forward. It is important residents are signposted to the help, advice and support that is available. And that's not just available through Hearts Help the Citizens Advice Bureaus and a number of other organisations like Families First have come together to support our residents. And I'm proud of that, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Tim Hutchings, um, you indicated. Chair, I, I actually put my hand down again. I was going to come and speak in behalf, on behalf, sorry, in support of the motion. Um, and I think everything I want to say has been said already, so I'll leave it at that. Right. Thank you, Tim. Right. If there are no other uh, pe persons wishing to speak, um, can I invite Mark, Wa Mark Watkin to exercise your uh, reserved right? Mark. Thank you very much, Chairman. I think we have to stress that this debate wasn't about any failure of the County Council to deliver support in terms of uh, through its own services and indeed help is being given through to the community elsewhere and indeed listening to the list of, uh, uh, of support that's come through from various communities, what stands out is just the, the desperate need that this debate has, has uh, brought to everyone's attention. Now, this is about the failure of the government to act in a cohesive and timely manner in preparing for uh, or addressing the needs of this community of people, this, these young people who, as I said previously, are the fastest growing group in poverty in this country. So thank you to, for all the members who've spoken about what they uh, have been doing locally. And indeed, thank you for the executive members for spelling out what the county has been doing. It's very impressive. So I turn then to why the leader of the council can't just accept our amendment to his motion to actually therefore reinforce the statement that there's going to be a panel meeting of two panels on the same date on the 26th of November and also to look at taking the scheme forward until the summer holidays. This scheme, at the moment, the government has made no plans to prepare, to provide uh, food for children in the way that the scheme is being produced until the, after the end of March 31st. The uh, Department for Education scheme is to do with sports and food in that context. It is not geared to children in a special uh, with uh, free school meals. So all we're asking is ex plan to extend this into the summer holidays. And of course, if the government comes up with a better scheme by then, then of course this, this will fall by abeyance anyway. But it's a statement of intent, it's a statement of support for those families who are looking into the future in despair. I ask you to take our amendment, add it to your original motion, and then we will all be able to accept it. And in fact, at that point, today's debates can come to a close. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Can I invite Teresa Heritage to speak? And you have your, you, you reserve your right, Teresa. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I wasn't quite sure when I was being able to come in, so thank you very much. Um, I'm not going over the debate today. We've all heard it, but I can assure you, as it's sort of sounded a bit like that this administration does really care about children and young people, and it is at the forefront of our minds at the whole time, especially mine. Now, given that we do not have a final government guidance on the uses for COVID winter grant, 
uh, nor the holiday activities scheme. It would be imprudent of us to make promises that we cannot keep to provide free school meals over the summer and half term um, in and autumn half term in 2021. And that's where our motions differ. You have heard that the administration has already committed to the provision of free schools over Easter 2021 and May half term 2021 over and above the funding we have received from um, the government. Hence, we are committing our own resources there. And you've also heard that um, we will have a joint panel on the 26th of April. And that was something that Terry Duris and I had been considering for quite some time, but hadn't quite got there yet. Um, as already said, the COVID winter grant is not about free school meals. It's about the protection of the poorest and most vulnerable families in our society of any age. And I'm making that clear. We are looking from naught to 16. And if if we can, and we're waiting for guidance, we're going to be going up to 25 for the children who've left care or those children with SEND. The administration has chosen to use the free school meal cohort as a proxy for identifying need whilst recognising that there were others that need support. We are identifying this other cohort, as it were, uh, across the public, private and voluntary sector. And by December, I am confident that we will know, with the help of councillors as well, where this silent minority are, because not everybody is visible. The COVID pandemic has changed our lives and the way we all live. It would not be right, therefore, to let this massive time of change to pass without a thorough look at how the council, how COVID has affected One minute, the county. Perry. Yeah. Childhood poverty and neglect has to be at the forefront of my role in children's services. I'm therefore asking, uh, there for asking the chairman of scrutiny to reconvene the free school meal topic group from 2018 to look again at child poverty child poverty and food hunger, and the county's response to the need with all our partners over the long term. This is not the short term, this is the long term. On our watch, no child will go hungry, nor be neglected. On our watch, together with partners on the Children's Safeguarding Board, we have the ambition to eradicate neglect of children and young people in Hertfordshire. Indeed, a Hertfordshire campaign, which will run for a, which will be called Neglect Matters, working with the NSPCC will be launched on launched on child on World Child's Day this week on the 20th of November. This is a caring administration. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, I'd now like to invite David Williams to exercise his reply, his right of reply. And you have three minutes, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I do think it's incumbent on all of us to recognise just how much support uh, Hertfordshire and Hertfordshire County Council has had from this government uh, since the start of the pandemic. It's some £130 million. So I think we should take some, we should have some confidence uh, that government is willing to support um, local government uh, when need be. And we've now seen that with these two tranches of funds in order to support um, holiday hunger. I share Asif's concern about whether vouchers are the perfect way to deliver support to um, our residents. Clearly, there's a link to um, the benefit system, universal credit, as you know, um, universal credit standard allowance for the 12 months from March through to March uh, 21 was extended by a thousand pounds a year, 20 uh, odd pounds a month, uh, sorry, a week. And that's helpful, but it will be really interesting to see what the government's able to do in respect of universal credit uh, for uh, the following uh, 12 month period. Points have been raised about um, the position of fit, fed and red. We've highlighted that in the, in the motion because it just demonstrates that Hertfordshire uh, has got terrific experience in this area. Uh, to Margaret and Lynn's points, do also recognise National Citizen Service and some of the schemes that are run by YC Hearts during the uh, holiday periods. But the real difference between the two motions that we've got before us now, the amended motion and the original Conservative motion, the Conservative motion pledged that we would fund um, free school meals um, over the Easter holidays and the summer half term. What I'm afraid this authority is not able to do at this stage is commit to providing funding for the summer holidays. 
because candidly, that is an 11.88 million pound decision. 90 pounds a week for six weeks for 22,000 um, uh, of our children is an 11.8 million pound decision. And candidly, one, one minute, I'm, David. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, candidly, I'm not able to recommend that to uh, um, Council at this time. Therefore, I would ask you to um, support the Conservative motion at 4.2 on the order paper and urge you to reject the Lib Dem amendments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Right. Um, I'd now like to ask Council to vote on the Liberal Democrat amendment. So if you can turn on your chat boxes, just tap on the chat function and it'll be loaded any minute now, as you should now see before you uh, the uh, vote function and ignore the, uh, if, you, if you've got stuff at the bottom, just tap on it, it'll disappear and then you can vote for or against or abstain from the Liberal Democrat uh, amendment. So if you'd like to start your voting now. Nigel Bell, you have your hand up. This is amendment number We have 71 responses at the moment. I am now going to close the vote. Did anybody have any problems voting on that occasion. If, yes. Now, who is that? It's Derek Ashley. The uh, voting box didn't come up in my chat box. Fine. Um, Derek, um, then we're prepared to take your vote. And you are, are you, how are you voting on this amendment? Against. You're voting against. Thank you. And we are now going to share the results with you. Can I just tell you that the result of the vote was 46 against the Liberal Democrat amendment, 26 for the Liberal Democrat amendment. And you should see before you now screen, which will show you how everyone voted. I can see it, yes. This is really helpful, Chairman. Thank you, and to uh, probably Steve Charters and others for doing this. Thank you. Although a little larger could be could be uh, helpful. Yes, for those of us challenged in the eyesight department, this is very difficult to read. I totally agree. I I will see what we can do. Not so quick on the scrolling. I think it was a suggestion I made to Quinton to do this. This is very helpful, though. Yeah, it just has to go to full screen rather than this half yeah. screen, that's all. Yeah. Not I so can't quick. see it at all. Yeah, you, you're scrolling I can a bit see it. I've got good glasses on, so I can see it. But the trouble is the print is very, very, very faint. On the iPad, you can expand it to make it bigger. Yes, that's right. Oh, yes. How do you do that? Well done. I haven't spotted that. <laughs> right. Put your fingers on the screen, Alan. Yeah. Put your th put your thumb and your forefinger on actually on it and open them, and that should make the picture bigger. Ah. 
Right, OK, thank you. Excellent, good. Chairman Richard Thake, a suggestion. Yes. It, it, clearly, if, if this was in bold type, as some of the headings have been, it would be a damn sight easier to read. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, this is all, order would be easier. <laughs> yeah, this is all being noted, don't worry. Yeah. Right, this, I this think... This is a big improvement on last time, Madam Chair. Oh, I so agree with you, Stephen. Well, can, I, right. can I just say, Madam Chair, can't read it at all. I'm Who just expanding the Roma. screen. It's readable. Right. Should now then. I'm just beginning to wonder whether we should have the mobile optician come to Candy Hall. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I am jesting. Well, of that's course. a kind. Is that one from Barnard Castle? <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Oh. If you want to call back, <laughs> um, yes, this was this topical, was part of the main folks. Still in the public domain. C can we can we mute our comments now, please? I know it's tempting, but you can cope with that, right? Yes. And Colette, if we'd been in the council chamber, we we make jokes there as well. Indeed, Judy. Um, right. OK, so we've finished now with the voting on, on the Liberal Democrat Amendment. Everybody's seen the scroll screen. Uh, we're, we're happy with that. We will now then move to the next phase of this. And I'm going to invite Stephen Giles Head Medhurst to move the second Liberal Democrat amendment. And Stephen, you have five minutes. I shan't move that. In light of the commitment being given during the course of this meeting and not prior to it, that there will now be a joint meeting uh, of the, um, the two panels, the children's panel and the education panel on the 26th of uh, November, I will, I will withdraw the motion on the light of that commitment that's being made by David Williams. Thank you, Stephen. That's that's very helpful. In that case, I believe we move to the substantive vote um, on the conservative motion. So, if you'd like to tap on your chat box, oh, it's and 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 I st we still got I still got the old one up. Tap on your chat box, and we should now have. The new voting screen. It's the wrong screen, Chairman. It says Liberal Democrat Amendment. Yes, I'm just. Hold on a second. We'll... Stephen's fingers are working as fast as they can. I. Oh. Please don't vote yet. It's there, Madam Chairman, at the bottom. Right. Yeah, it's there, Colette. Item 4.2. You're on mute, Madam Chairman. Thank you. I'm just making quite sure that we are voting on item 4.2, the substantive motion. Chairman, I've got no ballot form again, so I will vote for. Right, I'm, we're making a note of that, Derek. Right. My screen. Oh, there we are. Right. We have 69 responses so far. Up to 70. It's a bit like watching the American elections, isn't it? <laughs> 71. Not quite, I hope. Who demands a recount? <laughs> Careful, I might ask for a manual recount by uh, Quinton. There's only 50 people here, the 71 votes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blow it now, Stephen. I'm sure, Stephen. I'm sure we've run the argument. <laughs> 
We have 71 responses. Is, is anybody? And we have Derek, which is 72. Um, Could always I question see. whether or not the technology has been bought from South America, of course, isn't it? Yeah, I'm having trouble scrolling down chair to actually send. I put my vote in, but it won't budge. The That's scrolling right. Well, well, I'm, sorry, I will. I will close the vote now. If there are any issues like yours, Drida, uh, yeah, we, we will. It has. OK, good. So the vote is now officially closed and I can, can tell you that we have 64 voting for, no one voting against and eight abstentions. Now, if you wish to see the scroll screen with the names on, you can, um, although it's not a recorded vote. Um, there doesn't seem to be any real wish to do that. Fine. Then, so that so that the substantive motion then has been passed, um, and this is the end of the extraordinary general meeting. Thank you all very much indeed. The I think you will agree that it did go um, more smoothly this time. And we will be incorporating the comments about the scroll screen uh, for in time for our December meeting. And there are uh, one or two other improvements that we'll be able to unveil uh, at that meeting. A little Christmas present, perhaps. Mm. <laughs> anyway. well done, Thank, Thank you. you Thank you all Thank very you, much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. 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 Thank you.